All right, ladies and dudes, it's this guy, one of your very favorite people with Parkinson's. Of course, it's Jeremy, also known as J Mac. Jeremy Mac. I go by many names. All right, I think you guys probably ought to pull up a chair on this one. This is going to be kind of a touchy one. Um, I guess I... Part of me doesn't like talking about stuff like this because it's, it's... I don't like being the bearer of bad news, so to speak. And this isn't bad news so, so much as it's just reality. Now, uh, before we get into it, I'd just like to let you know that you can email me at jmac... <clears throat> excuse me, jmacpodcaster at gmail.com. Still fighting this congestion. Okay, one of the things that I, a question that I get a lot or, or like something that people are always wanting to talk about in my messages and, and emails is the newly diagnosed want to know how long do I have? I, I can't tell you that. I'm going to title this episode Predicting Parkinson's. It's impossible. I remember when I first was diagnosed, I would ask people who had relatives um, that had Parkinson's how long how long were they sick and how long did they were they functional I got a wide variety of answers for instance my old boss Bill Bill Box he told me that his dad had Parkinson's for 30 years and was like a car salesman or something could be getting that wrong he he worked for a long time was able to support the family by the same token, he also told me the job I had at the time was very physical. He said, yeah, with this physical job, you're probably going to roundabout need to find another line of work here before too long. But then I also heard a story of another guy whose brother-in-law was a cop. And he lasted two years on the force. And then I, I, I don't know, I, I don't, I'd, be, I'd be lying if I said I knew what he did after. I made it two years. Um, now, now there's a big variety of difference there between two years of employment, or at least in his original field, and then the other guy who apparently supported his family for decades through, uh, a, I guess, a non-physical job. It's just a really dicey subject, and I wish I had a better answer. I mean, for instance, if I when you when I was first diagnosed, if you would have told me, by the way, I, I'm getting ready to take a pill here. I take half pills. So strong to my system. If you were to tell... Yeah, you can see I'm a little trembly. A little trembly. If you were to tell me when I was first diagnosed that I'd only be able to work two more years and then after that I would be completely unemployable due to the wiggles in my legs or my unsteady walk, I would have been freaking devastated. If you would have told me that I had a limited amount of time to play guitar, I would have believed you but I still would, it would have bummed me out. And I mean, that's one of the things that bums me out more than anything is not being able to play my guitar or not being able to play it comfortably. I couldn't swallow that information if you would have told me that when I was first diagnosed. You, you, I wish there was a way you could read the tea leaves and know exactly what your progression is going to be. Time to take my pill. Water, always good for you. But he, he, I've got a visual aid. First of all, I want, I want to show you this. Dark Side of the Moon, Pink Floyd. The reason I picked this album, and sometimes there's a reason, sometimes there's not. There was a, there's a reason I picked this album today. Parkinson's, your Parkinson's journey is kind of like the Dark Side of the Moon. It's scary and unknown. And that's the nearest I can really put on it. The, I guess the most... I can, I can tell you, I don't know. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Here's another example. My 11-year-old son has these. What are they? They're like these Spider-Man things that if you throw them on the wall, which this one isn't sticky the one at the moment, they'll stick and then they'll fall down the wall like, oh no, Mr. Bill. Okay, right now I'm looking at one on the ceiling in there, one on the ceiling in there. They've been up there for weeks. How long are they going to stay up there? I have no idea. I know eventually they will fall, but just like with Parkinson's, I know it'll eventually debilitate us. Uh, but there's no way to really know. All I can say is that it's progressive. It's a progressive degener degenerative neurological condition, meaning it gets worse with time. That's the only thing I can tell you for sure. And I wish there was like 
a better answer, but I mean, I remember when I was first diagnosed, I told my doctor, my movement disorder specialist, I said, well, at least I know what's going to bring me down. And he kind of smiled and chuckled. And But I really don't. When I, this is where it gets weird. And this is where, this is the difficult part to talk about. Part, just, have, just because we have Parkinson's doesn't mean that our health troubles are over. Not only are there going to be complications from, from Parkinson's, as we get older, we're going to develop more conditions. I got a relative who was healthy his whole life, developed diabetes later, later in his life. He couldn't have known that was going to happen. We, we could die any number of ways. Parkinson's is the one sure thing that it will eventually weaken us to the point where we will die from it. But, and I, I know this is cliche to say, but you got to take it one day at a time. You can't swallow this, this jagged little pill, to quote another uh, good musician there, Alanis Morissette. You can't swallow this jagged little pill with one swallow. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be the little bit of medicine here, a little bit of medicine there, a little bit of medicine. I'm not talking about cinnamon, Parkinson's meds. I'm talking about the bitter taste of this disease. I hate it. I hate it more than anything I've said before. There's, a, there's two or three people in my life that I absolutely cannot stand. I would not wish this on them no matter how badly I might think of them. So my advice to you guys is like, make hay while the sun shines, so to speak. When I found out I had Parkinson's, I went through a period, a very pro prolific period of writing and recording. Now, was everything gold? Hell no. But I spent a lot of time recording while I could still play, and I'm very happy that I did that. When I, when I first got diagnosed, I started saving money. I'd always kind of been worried about that type of thing, but I, I really kind of ramped up my limiting my spending and, and increase my savings. That's my only advice to you guys. You can't predict where this thing's going to go. It's a beast with its own mind. And it's the dark side of the moon. We know it's, we know it's there. We know it's, we kind of know what it's like, but it's dark. We, we can't really see. So if we spend too much time thinking about it, it's probably going to ruin the time we have. Like Michael J. Fox has said, if you spend all this time worrying about it and, and, and it ends up happening, you've lived it twice. I, that stuck with me so much. Just live for today, plan for tomorrow. Not a lot of chuckles on this episode. Not every episode is going to be chuckly. But like I said, maybe you've got a different perspective. Leave it in the comments. You can also look me up on Instagram and Facebook. I'll put those links below in the description. And of course, jmacpodcaster at gmail.com. Until we meet... And the great gig in the sky. Peace and love from the city of St. Louis.